Hi guys, it's Nick, the ASMR nerd, and welcome to another episode of Relaxing Reviews. Today, we're going to be looking at something very interesting. It's a budget-oriented, 75% fully RGB mechanical keyboard. It's called the AJAZZ AK33. And just as a refresher, a 75% keyboard is a compact type of keyboard. It, it loses the numpad, like a 10 keyless board, uh, and it takes some of the uh, navigation cluster keys and the arrow cluster, and it kind of smashes them up against the main body of keys. Uh, and unlike a 60% board, it also retains the F keys along the top. So the benefit of a 75% board is that you retain an awful lot of functionality, but you compress it down into a very efficient, compact footprint. 75% boards are one of my personal favorite layouts, and so I'm excited to take a look at this one today. But they also remain a bit of a niche item and they often command a price premium. This one, however, the AJAZZ AK33, uh, has full RGB backlighting and weighs in at a wallet-friendly 50 US dollars, which makes it quite unique. Uh, and the good folks at banggood.com kindly sent along a review sample for us to take a look at here today. And of course, if you're interested in picking up one of these for yourself, there is a purchase link down in the video description. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at the AJAZZ AK33 RGB mechanical keyboard. So here we have the AJAZZ AK33 in box. And as usual, we will start out examining the exterior and the packaging, and we'll work our way inside to check out the product itself. So as you can see, the exterior is a very no-nonsense functional brown cardboard box with minimal branding. It's kind of drab, actually. And this isn't terribly different from other uh, Chinese keyboards that we've seen before, however. Here it has some kind of uh, geek branding, which is maybe this line of products, I'm not sure, with some Chinese around it. An AJAZZ sticker, which looks like it might be some kind of certification. It's got it's kind of shininess to it. You can see. Maybe. At least it looks like it does. And a stencil logo up here. On the front flap it says AJAZZ. Jazz around the side. He jazz on the back. A barcode, a serial of some kind. Maybe it says no test on it. Something's rattling around in there. Let's see? Where is that? Uh, no test. Which is, uh, does not inspire a terrible amount of you know, a huge amount of confidence. Uh, you can also see that the box got a little bit uh, mashed in transit. Not too bad, but if we turn it around to the back side here, you can see it's a bit creased. And dint it over here. It's not a huge issue, and obviously it's no fault of AJAZZ. 
uh, but it does go to show that things happen in uh, shipping. So hopefully the board inside is well protected. We'll find out, won't we? So on the back here we have more Ajaz branding address and, and website certifications. What's this here? Oh, check it out. 12 month limited hardware warranty. So that's good. That's uh, that's good to see right there that they are uh, very clear on the exterior of the box uh, what the warranty situation is because often that is lacking in such products. Over here we have more barcodes. Once again it says 12 month warranty and then a whole bunch of Chinese. Looks like uh, keyboard specs but they're mostly in Chinese. But let's flip it around and take a quick look. It says here, technical specification, AJAZ, AK33 RGB, dimensions and weight. So this board weighs about 610 grams, 82 keys, 1.6 meter USB cable. Uh, I imagine this is talking about key travel here. It says 4 plus or minus 0.3 millimeters. Compatible operating systems, and yet nowhere, nowhere on the exterior does it actually say what the switches are on this board, which is a little bit odd, isn't it? And I guess it might say it somewhere in all that Chinese, but of course I can't read that, so. But uh, the board that we have here today uses uh, AJAZ black switches, which we'll, we'll talk about uh, when we look at the board a bit closer, but they're linear black switches. Okay, let's open this thing up and see what is inside. So inside, actually, things look a little flashier. We have some nice thick foam padding holding the board in place, sort of uh, suspended in the middle of the box. So this is actually nicely protected. And I imagine that it didn't suffer for its, uh, the little bit of damage the box took in transit. And the board itself is covered in a soft kind of foam slip. That gives it some protection, anyway. And it's got a big Ajaz logo, some branding right on the front there, which is actually, like I said, kind of flashier than anything on the exterior of the box, isn't it? So we've got the usual. USB cable wrapped in plastic. It's got a protector on one end. is customary. This one's a flashy red, matches the Ajaz logo, just about, anyway. Okay, let's take the board out. Put that aside for the moment. 
And, oh, what's this? Hiding in here, I almost didn't see it. Oh, that's cute. It's a little... It's a little brush. Uh, which is a nice pack in to see, actually. That's cool. I've never seen that packed in with a mechanical keyboard before, but presumably it's for uh, cleaning between the keys, keeping your board clean. That's a nice little value add that uh, actually I did not expect at all at this price point, to be completely honest. So, it's got these soft bristles. A wooden handle. That's nice. That's good to see. Cool. And of course some paperwork. So let's move the box aside. That's that's everything. Nothing else in there. Let's take a quick peek at the inserts. So, we get a Geek branded uh, something, a quick application guide, it says. <laughs> it's all in Chinese. The whole thing is in Chinese. So that's not very useful if you're an English speaker exclusively. But it looks just like a quick start guide. It's got, uh, I can see, function arrow up, function arrow down, function F8. So these are keyboard controls for uh, various uh, lighting controls, I imagine, and uh, media functions. That's what it looks like. So not, not much useful there, unfortunately. What's this? Oh my goodness. Check this out, guys. A jazz. He's playing jazz and he's on fire. Smoky a jazz man. <laughs> so good. The J is a saxophone. Oh, I just love the branding on these things. That's super funny, but I l kind of love it in a way. Uh, this is some kind of certificate, I suppose, of quality. It says here a jazz designed for PC gaming experts. Lots of Chinese, some, some websites. And on the back, a warranty card. Once again, it's all in Chinese. Including information on how to presumably register your product and redeem your warranty if you need to. I'll hold that there just in case you can read Chinese and you want to take a look at it. If you really needed to. You could use uh, Google Translate to figure this out in the photo app. You could probably muck your way through, muddle your way through. But uh, yeah, all the literature included appears to be in Chinese, which is of limited use to me and many of you, I imagine, unfortunately. But, but that being said, Ajaz is to be commended for including warranty information at all. And I did say on the exterior there uh, that it has a one-year warranty. Let's take a quick look at the USB cable. It's, uh, it's wrapped in plastic here, although I don't really see the purpose, but nonetheless, there it is. It's 
not even a bag, it's just like a plastic tube. So the cable itself is black, obviously. The exterior claims, I think, that it's 1.6 meters. That seemed to be what it was saying. The uh, end that goes into the PC has this uh, custom fancy molded housing. It says A-Jazz on it. It's got some kind of futuristic styling to it, and it's got a a uh, protective cap on it, which is nice. Oh, and it's gold plated, which is cool. That's nice to see. Doesn't really make much of a difference, but it looks good. Uh, it's got a ferrite choke on it, which is what these little beads are that uh, are um, in line with the, on the cable here. And uh, if you've seen these and, and wondered what they do in past, what they do is uh, they reduce electromagnetic interference uh, from other devices and things that might get picked up by the cable, because the cable, of course, when it's extended and looped around, it actually acts as an antenna, naturally. And so uh, it can pick up electromagnetic interference, which can cause problems with the signal. So that's what ferrite chokes are for. So that's actually kind of nice to see. It's kind of a somewhat standard thing, but cable seems yeah, of reasonable length probably about the 1.6 meters claimed. Uh, and the end that interfaces with the keyboard is uh, USB, come on, focus, there. Uh, it's a mini USB, not micro, mini. It's also gold-plated. I wish there weren't so many different standards for small USB connectors. You've got mini USB, micro USB, USB-C, USB-B. It's a little ridiculous. It'd be nice if I could just use one cable for all of it, but alas, I cannot. Nonetheless, uh, the cable looks perfectly functional and of a decent length. And that's what really matters, isn't it? Okay. Let's take a look at the main event. So we'll take off these uh, this foam padding. Like I said, it appears nice and thick and holds holds the board safely in the box there. Jazz AK33 RGB 75% keyboard. And my first impressions 
are that it looks pretty darn good, actually. It's aesthetically pleasing. Uh, it has a nice, clean, minimalistic kind of look. These keys are uh, interesting. They, they're a bit smoother than I'm used to, actually. They're kind of coated, almost. Uh, but I like the legends. They're very uh, clean and sharp. And I like the font choice. It's not gamery. Uh, it looks quite refined, which is nice. Although I'm not crazy about this A Jazz logo on the space bar. That looks a bit tacky, unfortunately, but I guess they gotta put their branding somewhere. We'll return to the keycaps, but uh, let's take a look at the overall build of this board first. Um, as you can see, underneath the keycaps is an aluminum faceplate, an aluminum alloy faceplate, and it's got these nice chamfered edges, which actually look quite good. The aluminum is uh, slightly textured, it's like sandblasted or something like that. But it looks nice. It's cool to the touch, and it's reasonably thick, actually, you can see there. It's got some decent thickness to it. Uh, the base is a different story. And if I'm not mistaken, yeah, it's plastic. It's glossy plastic. Uh, ABS is fine, but glossy plastic, glossy ABS is not good. Uh, but let's got this plastic all over. Let's let's take this off. So that is, look how glossy that is. And even just coming fresh out of the plastic there, it already looks a bit, a bit ratty, doesn't it? You can see some smudging, a little bit of scuffing here. It doesn't look bad, but it, this is not going to last. Uh, it's like, well, it'll last. I don't think it's going to break, but... Uh, glossy plastic is highly prone to fingerprints and scratching and scuffing and why they would go with uh, gloss finish I don't know it's like this piano black finish it's very very shiny nevertheless it feels uh, reasonably solid there's not much flex, and that's uh, very likely due to that aluminum backplate, which, again, seems nice and thick. And uh, the back does feel a bit hollow um, and sound a bit hollow, as you can tell, but uh, it's not a very thick keyboard, so I don't think... Uh, it's too much of a problem. I think it, overall, it feels pretty darn solid. So, durability seems pretty good. Um, let's take a look at these keycaps quickly, since we touched on them. Uh, these caps appear to be uh, laser engraved. And what that means, if you may don't, or if you don't know, uh, it means that, you I'll pull one off. It means they're made from one chunk of plastic. Yeah, you can see. It's all one piece of, of translucent white plastic. 
that has then been coated with some kind of uh, paint or coating, the black coating. And then a laser was used to etch that coating, to engrave, burn away that coating, to expose uh, the plastic underneath. And in that way, the light will shine through when the LEDs are illuminated. And uh, it's an easier manufacturing method than uh, like a double shot method in which uh, it's actually made from two separate plastics and the legends are also plastic. Benefit of a, a double shot method, of course, is more durability. Uh, the challenge with this type of laser etching is that eventually this coating is prone to wear and uh, it might start to flake or chip away and your legends will start to get damaged. Uh, and how long that takes depends really um, entirely on, well, how you use it, but of course the nature of the coating. Um, but uh, you can get this really nice, sharp-looking print using the laser engraving method. So uh, that's why these legends look so nice and so sharp. Uh, but there is a compromise there. It's not terrible to see laser engraved ABS caps, but uh, my preference is double shot. Uh, the finish that they've coated these with seems, like I said, quite smooth. You can see, maybe if it wants to focus. Uh, yeah, you can see it's smoother than your average textured ABS. It actually feels nice. It's got this kind of very fine-grained matte texture to it, which is appealing. I like that. And in terms of thickness, I mean, this isn't uh, the thickest cap I've ever seen, but it feels pretty sturdy. If I squeeze the edges, I don't get a lot of flex, very minimal. So it's not like a nice thick PBT, but it's... it's uh, certainly passable, and we'll get the job done. So, in terms of durability, I think this looks pretty good. Uh, let's just take a, another quick look at the back side here. We didn't really look at it in detail. We've got one, two rubberized feet to stop it from slipping. We've got three, four up here, uh, which are on flip out stands. There we go. And actually we've got even little treads on the bottom of the feet as well, which is great because it means that, uh, yeah, it should stay in place on your desk. Flip out feet feel nice and sturdy. And they are actually made of a matte plastic, which I would prefer to have seen on the entire back of this board. And I don't know why they went the glossy route again. It's too bad. But anyway, those are very functional. Uh, it has some Ajaz branding uh, etched into the back there. And then a cereal and more of that geek branding. And some Chinese. So that's the back there. And the edges are this uh, kind of rounded, that's actually beveled, I guess, edge. It's already starting to pick up dust and fingerprints. And, uh, and right here, we've got the mini USB connector. That's offset on the left-hand side of the board. And that is it. There's nothing else around the margins. So let's talk briefly about layout here. Um, this is, as I mentioned, uh, is a 75% keyboard. And what that means is that it's, uh, again, lacking the numpad and then uh, certain members of the 
navigation cluster and the arrow key cluster have been taken and smushed up against the right side of the board here. And what results? Uh, oh, and of course we've got the the F row along the top here. And what results is this very efficient layout where we have a lot of functionality packed into a fairly small footprint. And I like that. I like that a lot. The board's only about uh, a foot from end to end and maybe five inches tall or so. And yet we retain all that functionality in the dedicated function row, which is great. And the dedicated arrow keys, which are a big plus for many people, myself included. Uh, what Ajaz has chosen to do here, though, which is non-standard, is it's got uh, an oversized escape key, as you can see, an oversized delete key on this side. And then it's done a very strange thing with the arrow keys. It's got oversized arrow keys. One, two, three, four. These are looks like 1.25u or 1.5u keys. So they're extra wide and uh, that's Ajaz claims that's for ergonomic purposes and perhaps it is because it makes them easier to find under your fingers no doubt but uh, the downside of that is that the, the uh, right shift becomes very tiny here as compared to the left shift. Got this itty bitty right shift, which looks very funny uh, and hopefully won't be too much of a pain in the butt when typing, but uh, we'll see. Uh, but the real challenge here is that uh, these are non-standard key sizes. So finding replacement caps for this is going to be really difficult if you don't like the default caps or if you're the kind of person that likes to swap out your key caps regularly. Uh, standard sets are not going to have the keys that you need for the arrow keys, for the tiny shift, or for the oversized escape and backspace, or delete, I should say. Uh, and that's kind of a major drawback, uh, for me anyway, personally, because I do like to swap out my caps. Uh, poor keycap compatibility is not a great thing, but, um, and I would argue that the ergonomic benefits of the, uh, oddly shaped or oddly sized keys, um, do not outweigh the downside of poor compatibility. Something else that I notice here, actually, while staring at this thing, is a very, very tall uh, F row. <laughs> look at that. You look at the profiles, the heights of these keys are standard all the way along. This is, uh, I guess, an R1, R2, R3, R3, R4 height profile there. And then this must be an R5, which you very, very rarely see. Um, in fact, I don't think I've ever seen R5 height keys before. It's usually another R4 row. And again, this is done for ergonomic purposes to make the top row, the F keys, easier to reach for your fingers. You've got this kind of stepped curve here. So when your hands are sitting on it, it's, it's easier to, to hit those distant F keys. So ergonomically sound, but again, it limits keycap compatibility because if you want to replace some of the caps on the top row here, uh, you're going to have to find R5 keys uh, to match the rest of them. And most standard keycap sets do not include an R5 height uh, F row. So um, some interesting design choices here made in the name of ergonomics, uh, but they uh, severely impact keycap compatibility which is a shame. And last but not least, of course, let's take a look at the switches under these caps, these non-standard caps. So I will pull off a few switches down here. Let's just uh, pull off arrow key, 
this weirdly oversized end key, which again, is going to be hard to find. I mean, you can put blanks on uh, if you wanted, uh, or you could special order, uh, I'm sure, keycaps, but uh, it's just going to be a pain in the butt, and any set that you buy is not going to uh, have the caps that you need. And let's pull off, sure, the enter key. I should use the puller. I'm trying to be lazy here. Let's use the keycap puller. There we go. After all, that is what it's for. Okay. So, here we have uh, what Ajaz purports are its own uh, in-house switches. Um, and I have no reason to dispute that other than the fact that I've never heard of them supplying switches to any other boards. So it seems odd to me that they would make their own custom switches exclusively for their line. They wouldn't be the first manufacturer to do so, but uh, I have a hunch that these are probably uh, some kind of OEM manufactured switch that's then been rebranded, uh, perhaps tweaked, but uh, I don't know. I don't know enough to say. But uh, what we can see is that they have clear housings, which is nice because it lets the uh, uh, LED light penetrate the housing. Um, let's check the branding on them. Now they do say AJAZ on them. I don't know if you can see, but let's try and get this up nice and close. Let's see if it focuses. Yeah, I can't tell if it's visible there, but it does say AJAZ just below each stem. And uh, the stems are black in color, and they are linear, as you would expect a black switch to be. But uh, they are much lighter than a standard black switch. The actuation force feels much closer to uh, a red switch, and this aligns actually with jazz is a uh, marketing if you look at their uh, um, marketing copy for this board uh, the way they describe the switch is uh, linear and smooth which it is but then they claim that and I'm quoting directly here they say reduce 20 gram trigger pressure for the fastest response so these are actually not black switches at all, really. They're much more like reds, uh, because uh, a standard Cherry MX black switch uh, has a 60 uh, gram force, actuation force, uh, or a little higher, 60 centinewton, 61 point something gram force, whatever, close enough. Um, whereas uh, a standard Cherry MX red switch has a 45 gram actuation force, but if a Cherry MX Black is 60, and these claim to, again, reduce 20 gram trigger pressure, I assume that means that it, they are 20 grams lighter than a standard Cherry MX Black switch, which would put them at about 40 grams actuation force, which is actually even lighter than a Cherry MX Red or a Cherry MX Brown, for that matter. So, uh, these are very light. And very smooth. Actually, I do like the smoothness of them. They feel a bit like a Gatoron switch in that way. Um, a tiny bit of wobble to the stem. I don't know if you can see that. Which is going to result in a bit of clatter when you're typing and a bit of a wobble on the downstroke, which is not desirable, but it's not awful anyway. We'll see how that pans out in uh, actual typing. 
uh, Ajaz claims a 60 million keystroke lifetime uh, for each of these switches, which take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> uh, of course, there's no practical way for a consumer or even a reviewer like myself to test that lifespan out. But that is, of course, comparable with Cherry's MX line, which uh, they tout lifetimes in the 50 to 60 million uh, keystroke range. So that sounds believable anyway. Uh, and of course, they are board mounted and they are very sturdily mounted to this aluminum faceplate. So uh, that looks all good. And the LEDs are round. Switch mounted round LEDs with actually looks like a kind of rectangular diffuser uh, on either side of the round diode. So, or a spherical diode, I guess it is. Uh, so I have high hopes for the lighting coming out of these between the clear housings and these LEDs with these diffusers. I hope that uh, they look nice. You can see I pulled off the enter key here just to show you uh, that the larger keys use Cherry MX style stabilizers, so they should all feel pretty solid. And indeed, uh, there's a bit of a bit of key wobble, but nothing egregious. Really, what uh, what you'd expect out of any board. So that all looks pretty good. So I'm very curious to try typing uh, and see what the typing experience is like with these uh, strange age as black quote unquote switches. Uh, but we're going to hold off on that for a moment. We will get to the typing test shortly. But first, let's take a look at the RGB lighting functionality of uh, this board, and then we'll take a look at the software as well. So this is what we are greeted with when we plug in the Ajaz AK33 RGB for the first time. Uh, it's this kind of uh, rainbow ripple, these concentric ripples, but they're not moving outwards like a typical ripple effect they're actually moving inwards towards the center of the board and it's a very uh, mesmerizing effect i've never actually seen it quite like this on any other board and my first impressions of the leds on this board are quite positive uh, they are vivid they are reasonably bright and they may yet get brighter i haven't tested the brightness settings actually this is just default and that uh, bright kind of silvery aluminum backplate does uh, a great job of reflecting the light and uh, as i had hoped those clear housings really help diffuse it so you get this this wonderful saturated light with these smooth gradients that I think looks really nice. But uh, of course, this is not the only lighting mode on this keyboard. There are a number of others uh, and they are accessed, uh, well, but two ways, of course. There is software that's available for this board and we're going to investigate that shortly. But uh, there are evidently 19 uh, I believe, 18 or 19 different preset lighting modes that are all uh, configurable or accessible at least without any software at all. So we hold down function, we press F8. Okay, well that turns off the light. Let's turn it back on. There we go. Here's another mode. Okay, so this is a typical rainbow ripple across the board. This would be a good opportunity to test out some of the other controls. The function button, by the way, is in a non-standard location, which carries on that sort of a non-standard layout of this board. It's up here, sandwiched between F12 and delete. I don't know if you can see where my hand is, but it's in the top 
right corner of the board. Took me a little bit to find it, actually. It's normally down here on the bottom row. So if we hold down function and we press uh, the up arrow, I believe it gets brighter, although I think maybe we're at maximum brightness. So let's try function down. Yes, so that dims it. Ah, so that's as dim as it gets. And you can see the caps lock light flashes. Now that's one step up from the bottom. Two, three, four, five. I can't tell if it's getting any brighter. Ah, there we go. Caps lock lights flashing. So that must mean that uh, we've hit maximum brightness there. Uh, so it looks like there's maybe six or seven brightness steps. I actually didn't see when the caps lock started flashing, so maybe you can count it in the video. But uh, certainly enough. And so we're at maximum brightness right now, and it is quite bright. It's pleasingly bright. We can also hold down function, and we can press um, left arrow which changes the direction of the effect. So right now it's flowing right to left. We press it again. Now it's flowing left to right. So that's good to see. So now let's, uh, let's check out some of these other presets. Let's go function F8. Okay, so this is a rotating rainbow by the looks of it. Okay, I think we found the solid color option. And, uh, or have we? Oh, maybe we're slowly fading through colors. I think we are. Yes, we certainly are. So this is a very slow fade through colors. Okay, let's go F8 again. I'm not even sure what's... Oh, it's a breathing. This is a, a rainbow breathing. You can see there's a colored gradient across the board. And uh, it's slowly turning on and off. Okay, next. Oh, this looks like it might be... Uh, this is either solid or it could be a ripple. No, this is the solid. Okay. And I think when we go function, uh, right key, yes, it changes the color. So we can cycle through various color presets. It's attractive how the color starts in the center and, and ripples out to the sides of the boards. I, what I'm noticing is that the gradients on this board are very smooth. In fact, remarkably so, considering the price of this board. I have to say, uh, these LEDs are impressing me. Lovely. Okay. Very nice. Let's see what else we've got. Function F8. Okay, so this is our per key, where we press an individual key, and uh, that lights up and fades out. Looks nice. Uh, what's this one? Ah, yes, the ripple, the outwards ripple. It's a classic. This is a rainbow ripple. I imagine that I could press function right arrow, and it would probably cycle through solid color ripples as well. Okay, what's this one? Uh, the row, horizontal ripple, constrained to the row, the raindrops effect, which we've seen on a number of boards before, but which looks very nice. So rainbow raindrops. And interestingly, actually, this one, the raindrops, uh, when they change color, when an individual key changes color, it doesn't actually uh, fade out. It just holds that color until it changes again. A 
This looks like a static rainbow mode. Maybe, uh, yes, when you press each key, it cycles through colors. Okay. Vertical static rainbow. Oh, this is a sine wave. <laughs> Look at it, it's kind of waving up and down. Maybe you can see that. Actually, you can probably see it better from your perspective. Uh, the, the thing with all these lighting modes is, you know, 80% of them you'll probably never use except to show off to your friends and say, look at how cool my RGB mechanical keyboard is. Um, because we do that, right? You do that? <laughs> I do that. Um, but uh, a lot of them are not terribly functional. Oh, what the heck is this? Okay, so it shoots in from the outside and then blasts back out in another kind of rainbow mode. Very interesting. Oh, there's another... I'm trying to figure out if that's random raindrops or if there's a pattern to it. I think it's random raindrops again. But this time they do fade out. No, I think there is a pattern. I can't really see what it's supposed to be from here, but maybe it's another wave. How many have we gone through now? Okay, this is kind of a, a light. It bounces back and forth, all right, from one side of the keyboard to the other. And I think we're back to our solid, what is this? Solid color again? I guess we are. Yeah, solid color. Okay, so and there's our ripple, our rainbow ripple. Once again, where we started. So I did not actually count how many lighting modes there were there. Uh, but it looked like a fair few. Anyway, I think it was certainly up there around 18 or 19, as they claim. Again, you could probably go back, watch me cycle through them, and we could, we could count them. But uh, there's enough, anyway. There's certainly enough... Uh, to be of use. Now there is per key backlighting available on this board, uh, evidently, although I think the software might be required for it, but let's just try one thing. What does function F9 do? No, nothing. Okay. Interesting. All right. Well, I'm not sure how one accesses per key backlighting without the software. Um, but I'm going to look into that to see if I can find anything about it. Uh, and in the meantime, I'm going to install that software and uh, we'll take a look at it. And here we have the AJAZ AK33 software. And it's got this very, uh, cl fairly clean aesthetic, actually, uh, compared to many pieces of similar software that I've used before. Before we dive into the software functions, I should point out, uh, I did take a quick look at that uh, slip that was all in Chinese, remember, that came in the box? And I was able to figure out that if you hold down function uh, and press tilde, you enter the custom per key lighting mode. So function tilde switches to that mode, function tilde, once again, uh, you can see the caps lock light is flashing. And what that means is that you can now press each key to set the backlighting. And you can cycle through a variety of colors. Uh, the same preset colors that we saw in the solid lighting mode a moment ago. So, uh, let's just set that, say, like so, and then we hit function tilde again, and now that's part of our custom backlight, per key backlight mode. Function F8 takes us back to our previous preset. Function tilde goes back to our saved per key lighting mode. So let's just 
turn that back to off there. Function tilde, function f8, there we go. Okay, I just wanted to say that and let you know because I, I did mention a moment ago that I was going to look into that and it turns out it it's quite easy. So now that we're looking at the software, oh, the other thing I should mention is uh, any uh, flicker that you see on camera, because I'm aware that there is some flicker in the lighting uh, on the camera, that is an artifact of the camera shutter speed and the uh, frequency of the LEDs, essentially, and it's not visible in real life. So the gradients are smooth, there is no visible flicker. Uh, in actuality, it's only an artifact of the camera and the recording, so I do apologize for the flicker, but it's pretty hard to eliminate entirely. So, okay. All that said, uh, let's actually look at the software. So we are presented here with uh, this relatively clean looking interface. It says AK33 Mechanical Keyboard Pro Gaming Keyboard in the top left, A Jazz top center. Uh, we've got a close, a minimize, and a home. I don't know what home does. Maybe it uh, takes you to their website. Um, we've got uh, three profiles by the looks of it. Profile one, two, and three. We've got a uh, lighting mode toggle. We'll see what that does in a moment. We've got polling rate options. So by default, it has 125 hertz polling rate, but we can set that to 1000 hertz if we like. Uh, which will, in theory, increase the responsiveness of the keyboard. Apparently, the apply button isn't required for that. I assume if we hit default, sure, let's restore the defaults. Oh, that turned off our board. And reset the lighting mode. Funnily enough, it actually doesn't set it to the default lighting mode that I got when I first plugged in the board, so don't know what the default really even is. We can cycle through all those lighting modes again, but um, there are a lot of them, aren't there? There we go. We're back to the ripple. I like this slowly moving concentric inward ripples. <laughs> it looks very nice. Uh, resetting the defaults again did not actually change the uh, polling rate back to 125 hertz, which is funny. Um, <laughs> Instead of cancel, we have cankle. So uh, this is not perfect software. You could probably have used a once over by a native English speaker, but that's all right. Uh, I should say that when you install the software, you download it from Banggood's, um, well, there's a link on the store page, on Banggood's store page uh, to a Google Drive where the uh, installer is stored for this software. That just seems to be how Banggood does it, and I think it's a very unprofessional way to serve up their software, but uh, otherwise you'd probably be downloading this from a Chinese website, and it would be impossible to figure out if it was the right software, you know, for your board. So um, I guess that that's uh, just how it's got to be. I do find it funny that uh, Banggood doesn't host the software on their own web server. You know, they use Google Drive, which just feels very unprofessional, but at any rate, uh, it downloaded quickly, it installed smoothly, uh, you can pick the install location, which is important for me and many others, and uh, other than that, there's really no options. It launches as a uh, application in the system tray. And uh, then you have to double click that to bring up this window. And uh, it does appear to be safe. It does appear that there is no uh, malicious software collection or anything like that going on with this software. Uh, I monitor all uh, incoming outgoing network traffic with a program called Glasswire, which is really great uh, and well worth checking out if you've. Uh, never used it before. It's a very handy and uh, easy to use program, but uh, this program has not made any attempts to connect to any 
distant servers or share any information like that. So it does appear to be uh, safe and at least somewhat functional. So let's uh, take a look here at lighting mode. Okay. <laughs> so here we've got several options. Uh, we've got all the different modes. Uh, we have a brightness slider. And we have direction toggles. Imagine other options will surface when we, uh, uh, you know, if they have other parameters like color selection. So this is evidently called the Fast and the Furious, which is really funny because this is actually a very calming looking uh, pattern as far as I'm concerned. Go with the stream. Yes. Okay. Uh, we've seen that one. Uh, we can set it to be colorful, or we can set it to be a solid color. And these are the solid colors we have to choose from, or we can go other. Ah, and here we have the standard Windows color selection, uh, where we can pick arbitrary colors. So this board is capable of 16.8 million different colors. Um, and uh, we can set them all with RGB values here. So that's quite impressive. Let's, uh, if we set it to black, it turns it off as one might expect. Okay, let's, uh, let's go red. Oh, interestingly, that turned it off. Hmm, that's strange. And uh, some of these colors don't seem to quite align with what I'm selecting here. So color reproduction is not perfect, but uh, it's not awful, and it's funny that, oh, there, now the red's working. It wasn't before. We can set it back to colorful, and it goes back to the rainbow mode. Uh, so we've seen all of these. These names are pretty good. Go with the stream, clouds fly, winding paths. Okay, that's the circular mode. Pass without trace. I don't know what that is. Ripple graph. Graph. No, that doesn't seem to be. I assume ripple graph would have been that sine wave, but flowers blooming. Oh yeah. Okay. Accumulate. Ah yes, I thought that was what this would be. And as you can see, other parameters are surfaced as appropriate. Let's go back to Fast and Furious. I think that's my favorite. We have our custom backlit mode. I suspect now that we can, uh, well, no, that doesn't seem to be, I thought maybe, oh yes, okay. We can click on a key and we can choose what color we want it to be, it looks like. Don't know what the difference between color and basic color is. Oh, that turned, oh, I see. Ah, so all the other colors that haven't been given a particular selection, you can set to whatever. So let's turn those back to black. Now, I would think that this would be, what is tool? Oh, we can draw on here? No, that doesn't appear to be the case. Oh, there we go. I see. Yes, so as you can see, I'm using my mouse to select individual keys to light up. Now we can go into eraser mode and turn those off. That's actually quite intuitive. This is not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, I see there's a various presets. FPS, MMO, MOBA, and RTS. Which probably change, yes, change the colors that appear by default. So the default FPS configuration has the few number keys, W, A, S, D, and R for reload. So that is all pretty functional. And I'm pretty happy with that. So what happens if we, let's uh, go back, what is one? Uh, one appears to be not much of anything. <laughs> Interesting. Both ways, okay. Oh yeah, that's the bounce back and forth. Let's go back to the old Fast and Furious. 
And you can set Fast and Furious to ripple outwards as well. There it goes. Oh no, that's still inwards, isn't it? Yes. Okay, that's funny. Now that's outwards. Even though the arrows show inwards. <laughs> well, anyway. It's a little bit quirky, evidently, but it does seem to be pretty functional. Uh, which is great. That's really good to see. And imagine now, let's turn off lighting mode. Let's go to profile 2. Uh, let's set it to trial of the light. And now back to profile 1. And hmm, it doesn't seem to be saving the profiles because profile 1 is giving us the same. So we had configured in profile 2. If we go back to 1, and we switch on lighting mode and set it back to fast and furious, and then back to profile 2, it's on fast and furious. So I'm not sure, maybe I'm not quite grasping how to use the profile mode here. It does take a moment for the board to reload the lighting in between changes, it seems, but that's no problem. It's just a second or so for it to reload some of these different uh, uh, settings. I assume that pressing OK will close the software, so I won't do that just yet because I don't really want to close it. And it appears that the Apply button doesn't do anything at all. I've not yet seen it. What is Snow Winter Jasmine? Now oh, that's what I thought was rain. Yeah, the apply, apply button seems pretty useless. Okay. Digital times. <laughs> Back to the Fast and the Furious. Okay. Um, so, uh, the last thing that I'd like to look at here is macro mode. Uh, so this looks like uh, a full macro recorder where we're able to uh, record a series of actions, set those to a particular macro, we can set delays, we can make it cycle multiple times, save it as a particular name. So we've just uh, activated macro one here. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now, but uh, it looks to be fairly functional. Uh, and all the settings that you would hope to see are there, and it looks like you can reorder the actions, which is pretty cool to see. Uh, what, can we cancel out of that? Yes, we can. What does this do? Evidently nothing. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the last thing I was curious about, if I turn off lighting mode, we can rebind single keys. So there you go. You can give it a uh, assign a macro as you would record uh, in the macro mode there. You can uh, change it to a, another single key or you can give it a multimedia function. So uh, that is good to see. Overall, it looks like very functional and relatively easy to use software. And it's uh, it looks significantly cleaner than, than similar software that I've used for other keyboards. So uh, surprisingly, AJAZ gets uh, uh, high marks on the software there. All right, so the last thing remaining here, or not the very last, but the next thing, and perhaps the most important, is the typing test. So I will type some passages, and you can listen to what it sounds like, and uh, then after that, we'll reconvene. I'll give you my impressions of what the board feels like to type on, and then we will uh, summarize the pros and cons.
So what's it like typing on the AJAZZ AK-33? Well, in a word, it's good. Uh, you saw a short sample of me typing on the board just a moment ago, and in the intervening time, I've used the board extensively. I've actually used it as my daily driver for a number of weeks and done all kinds of work on it as well as plenty of gaming. And I'm happy to report that the AJAZZ black switches are pretty good performers. Uh, they are very smooth, much like a Gatoron switch, so no scratchiness to speak of. They are linear, as advertised, like a Cherry MX Red or a Black. Uh, and they are very light, again, like a Cherry MX Red, less like a Cherry MX Black. Uh, personally, I prefer a slightly heavier key with a tactile bump. I am a big fan of browns, as many of you know. Uh, but if you like very linear, very smooth, very light switches, then I think you'll be a big fan of the AJAZZ black switches on this board. Uh, switch consistency felt pretty good across the board, and all of them seemed to work just fine, so no issues in the quality control department, I am happy to report. Uh, this board also supports N-key rollover, and I did test that out by pushing a number of keys at once, obviously not all 82, uh, but I was unable to uh, get it to stop registering, so it does appear that uh, the N-key rollover is functioning as advertised. Uh, now, not everything about the typing experience was quite so lovely. Uh, one thing that I started off liking and then eventually kind of changed my mind about was the texture of the keycaps. I mentioned when we were looking at the keycaps uh, that they seem a little bit smoother. Whatever that finish on them is, is a bit smoother than just like raw textured ABS or, or PBT material. Uh, and at first that feels really good under the fingers because you get this nice uh, kind of soft grained matte texture. Uh, but the downside is that with usage, those keycaps shine up really, really fast uh, and they start to feel a bit greasy and sticky. And that's just, you know, normal usage with clean hands. I'm not eating Doritos or anything while I'm typing on my keyboard, heaven forbid. Um, so just with regular use, they shine up very quickly and uh, they started to feel a little bit just tacky, a little bit unpleasant to work with. Not the end of the world, and of course you can wipe down your keyboard with some, you know, a little bit of uh, water or gentle soap and water on your keycaps and, uh, and I'm sure that they'll uh, clean right up, but uh, nonetheless, I thought it was worth mentioning. Also worth mentioning that while this non-standard key layout is pretty good for the most part, like the uh, enlarged arrow keys, the larger escape, the larger backspace, uh, that was all fine. Uh, but the shortened right shift key <laughs> took me a very long time to get used to, and even still, I find myself accidentally pressing the up arrow key with my right pinky instead of the right shift key. So uh, I'm not a fan of that right shift key, and personally, I would have preferred it if they had just kept the arrow keys standard sized and gone with uh, a longer right shift key. But those relatively minor quibbles aside, uh, the AJAZZ AK-33 with the AJAZZ black switches is quite pleasant to type on, and as you probably noticed in the typing sample, it's reasonably quiet as well. Uh, it doesn't make a, nearly as much noise as something with, for instance, blue switches or even brown switches, and uh, that's one of the major benefits of linear switches like the blacks, uh, like the reds. One other thing that I just remembered um, was because of the extremely low actuation force on these switches, I did find that sometimes I would accidentally actuate a key without meaning to, 
just by having my fingers resting on that key. This wasn't so much of an issue while I was typing. I found it to be more of an issue while I was gaming. Uh, for instance, when I have my fingers resting on the WASD keys, I would on occasion uh, trigger, you know, one of the keys without meaning to. <laughs> um, and that is a function of just the very low actuation force. Now, perhaps if you're more accustomed to linear keys with low actuation force, this won't be such a problem for you, but it is something that I ran into. But uh, yeah, overall, a very pleasant typing experience. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the home stretch. This has been a very long and extensive review, but we are at the end where I summarize the pros and the cons of the product. And as usual, I like to think positive. So let's start with the pros. The first thing that I appreciated about this board was that little brush that was included in the box. I know that seems like a small thing, but it's just a little detail, a little pack-in that makes me say, wow, that's very thoughtful in a keyboard at this price point. The second thing that I love about this board is that 75% layout. It is not a common layout, but it's one that I wish we would see more of because it's one of my favorites and I think it's something that a lot of people uh, could come to appreciate if it was more common. Uh, it's a very uh, efficient but highly functional layout so uh, I really like to see 75% boards. Third up is the appealing aesthetics. Uh, this is a nice looking board again especially given the price point. I think the keycaps look nice. I think that the choice of font for the legends is good and I think that nice thick uh, aluminum backplate looks really classy. Fourth pro is that detachable cable. That's something that we see on a number of smaller boards, typically uh, 10 keyless or smaller. Usually, in fact, it's the 75% or the 60% boards that seem to come with the detachable cable, whereas the 10 keyless and full size rarely seem to. I have no idea why that is, but it's a trend that I'd like to see across all keyboards because it just offers you more flexibility. It means that you can swap out the cable if you so choose for something that's more aesthetically pleasing or something that's longer. Uh, cable length wasn't an issue with this board, but nonetheless, it's nice to see that detachable cable. Next up, I really like that RGB backlighting. Uh, all aspects of it, as a matter of fact. I thought that uh, the LEDs were bright, they were saturated, the colors were nice and vivid on the board, and the gradients were smooth. Uh, it has per-key backlighting adjustment that's supported both in a, a software-free mode as well as in the software, uh, and has something like 15 or 18 uh, lighting presets. It's got a ton of different uh, backlighting presets, most of which actually look pretty good. So um, the RGB backlight implementation on this board is exceptional. Related to that is the good software. Uh, this was a bit of a surprise for me because I'm used to software that uh, eh, may be a little bit janky, a little bit rough around the edges with boards in this price bracket. But uh, the software that came with the Ajaz AK33, while not perfect, is very functional, actually has a relatively clean interface, and is fairly easy to use. So props on some good software. Adding to the long list of pros is those nice smooth switches. I think that these Ajaz Black switches are actually pretty darn good. Uh, like I said, very smooth action, not scratchy at all, uh, nice linear feel and nice light touch, low actuation force makes them uh, very smooth, very uh, fluid to type on. Almost done our long list of pros now. Uh, the second to last pro that I'd like to call out is the one year warranty. It's not a terribly long warranty, but one year is pretty standard for PC peripherals of this sort. And uh, in this price bracket, 
uh, the one-year warranty being stated up front like that is actually somewhat uncommon so it's nice to see that warranty and the final item on our long list of pros the kicker is that $50 price point this puts it firmly within the budget bracket and it has a heck of a lot of functionality considering its price I think $50 is an excellent price for this board now while that was an extensive list of pros all was not perfect with the Ajaz AK33 the first thing that I wasn't a fan of was that glossy black plastic shell that they use for the back of this keyboard as soon as I took the plastic off I could tell that it was trouble uh, it already had a bit of a hazy look in some spots uh, and that glossy plastic is just so prone to picking up fingerprints and scratches and scuffs and I guarantee you it's gonna look like trash after a year or two uh, so it's a really unfortunate choice I think a standard matte you know uh, lightly textured ABS shell would have served this board a lot better than that piano black glossy plastic second thing that I wasn't a huge fan of was the use of laser cut keycaps as opposed to double shot keycaps while it does allow them to have very sharp crisp legends it also means that they're prone to wear and they probably won't last forever it also means that they have that weird smooth texture that resulted in uh, these kind of sticky unpleasant very shiny looking keys after a short amount of time again with regular cleaning you can stave that off but uh, I just wasn't a fan of the texture of the keycaps after a short amount of use and unfortunately both of those previous issues are exacerbated by what might be uh, my biggest issue with this board and that is the non-standard layout because that means that keycap compatibility is very very poor and uh, you're not going to be able to go and purchase any standard set of replacement keycaps and have them work out fully with this board uh, you've got those oddly sized arrow keys you've got that weirdly short shift key which was also a pain to use when typing you've got the oversized delete and escape keys and so you're going to have to do some serious searching uh, if you want to find replacement keycaps for this board so after all is said and done what is the bottom line on the Ajaz AK33 RGB 75% mechanical keyboard? Well, I like it a lot. I think that it is an excellent budget 75% keyboard. Uh, that puts it in very uh, limited company to begin with. There are very few budget 75% mechanical keyboards out there on the market and the plethora of features available on the Ajaz AK33 puts it ahead of the competition uh, you would be hard-pressed to find any other 75% fully RGB mechanical keyboard for 50 US dollars or less it's not a perfect board I do have some minor quibbles mostly about the keycaps and the layout but uh, at the $50 price point I think this keyboard is a very good value and as a matter of fact I've seen it on sale before down at the 40 US dollar price point or even lower into the high 30s and at that point uh, I think it becomes exceptional value you'd be crazy not to buy it just for the heck of it for fun to have it to play around with so um, ultimately uh, especially if you don't plan on replacing the keycaps and especially if you're a fan of light linear switches uh, I heartily recommend the Ajaz AK33 75% mechanical keyboard once again special thanks to banggood.com for sending over today's review sample if you'd like to pick up an Ajaz AK33 of your own there is of course a purchase link down in the video description that you can click through on and check it out 
Thank you so much for watching today, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's review. I hope you found it informative. I hope you found it relaxing. And I look very forward to having you back here next time for another episode of Relaxing Reviews. Bye for now.